Eyewitness News reporter Jenny Runovich has been tracking the damage from these storms tonight, and she joins us now from the southwest side. Jenny? Yeah, we have a lot to show you tonight, John and Angela. We begin here in the Marwood Plaza on the southwest side. Wasn't difficult to pick where we were going to show you some flooding. Here in this Kroger parking lot, the flood waters rose very quickly as that rain came down. And then they receded just as quickly, just in the last hour and a half. Take a look. You can see the markings where it went away just recently, that water receding away. This is off Kentucky Avenue on the southwest side. Emergency crews came to this Kroger store to help evacuate the store. They had to get shoppers out safely and back to dry ground. Also, just down the street off of South Lyons, the challenge became getting people out of their homes as flood water started to rise. Some people chose to just walk out, but they are leaving behind a mess. Several basements, even some first floors filled up with water, three feet of water in one woman's mom's house. She called me freaking out. The water's coming up in her living room and Everything's flooded. She can't get out. She can't go nowhere. Now, there were problems tonight on the roads as well. The water rose quickly, causing some cars to get stranded as well. Uh, people just had to leave them behind to be either towed later after the water receded or just leave them hope they are there in the morning. Similar issue for people who tried to go around the water, unfortunately. This ground is so soggy. These folks quickly just got stuck in the mud and they could not make it out safely. Of course, flooding is just part of the problem. Strong winds were a huge issue with this storm as well. And our Eyewitness News reporter David McAnally is live in Tippecanoe County tonight where they dealt with those problems and they're cleaning up. David? Jenny, the storm wouldn't stop today. In fact, folks at the house behind us here, they barely had enough time to get the holes in their roof covered up before another storm hit them. The storm left a trail of damage near Clarks Hill, south of Lafayette. It was a very fast developing, fast moving storm. On Cobbler Lane, Pop's Garage in shambles. And I saw that just kind of lay over. It's got to make you sick looking at that. Oh, it does, because all my, I got a truck sitting inside there and all my tools and lawn equipment and everything else is in there. So Clyde Roberts remembers that wind. The trees was going this way and then that way. They was swirling. It wasn't a straight line wind. I mean, I didn't see a final. Next door, friends and neighbors pitch in to help victims dig out of a forest of downed trees. This is just a bunch of people from Dayton United Methodist Church coming out, helping us clean up. That's got to be great to see. Yeah, definitely. It's our church family. Everything come down around them. But then all of a sudden it got still and my husband said, let's get to the basement. Just in time, too, because... Then we heard um, some glass shatter. So there was one branch that came through and shattered one of the windows in the living room, actually where I had been sitting. At one of the last houses hit by the high winds, workmen hustled to seal holes before another storm hits. And then this was dead bolted up at the top, and this down here was dead bolted shut. Blew the doors right in. Yeah, it blew them inward, yes. Her mom and dad took cover and are okay. This can all be replaced as long as they're okay. That's all that matters. National Weather Service investigators are due out here tomorrow morning around 9 o'clock, survey the damage and decide whether, in fact, it was a tornado that struck here. L live here in Tippecanoe County, David McAnally, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. Back to you, Jenny. David, thank you very much. Here on the southwest side of Indianapolis, really flooding has been the big concern, and it's been a one-two punch. The same folks that dealt with it earlier in the week, unfortunately dealing with it again. Again, here at the Kroger Plaza, they had to evacuate some people, and we understand in a neighborhood just south of this shopping plaza along Bradford Street, about five people chose to go to the evacuation shelters this evening. The rest decided to shelter in place. We do want to show you some more video from the chapel. Apple Hill neighborhood in Indianapolis. Um, we understand that that's where we found some trees down as well. So it's not just the water. These trees have actually been snapped and tossed right into the road, taking out some power lines. So that means for the second time this week, 
people have been left in the dark. Take a look at the numbers this evening. IPL is now reporting just under 3,000 people without power tonight. Duke Energy has about 10,000 customers in the dark. Earlier today, power was finally restored to nearly everyone who lost it from the storms earlier this week. It certainly has been a very difficult week for folks, specifically on the west and southwest side of Indianapolis, but really all across central Indiana as we continue to deal with heavy rain, flooding, strong winds, and tornadoes. Just hoping for some dry weather soon, John, because it's been really tough on all the neighbors here. We'll send it back to you. Yeah, you and everyone else. Thank you, Jenny Runovich, reporting tonight. And firefighters working on downed power lines on the east side got a scare when they heard a loud boom and saw a bright flash of light. A transformer blew, possibly from a power surge, and moments later, a nearby home caught on fire. Now, firefighters quickly knocked down the flames, but the fire did damage the attic, the kitchen, and the garage. Now, when severe weather hits, you can keep ahead of the storms with the SkyTrack 13 weather app. It has live Doppler 13 radar, watches and alerts, and short and long-term forecasts for wherever you are.